Oh, okay. Let's kick butt again. Here we are again. So we, <laughs> we're back with Bruce. Back again. Part two. So for those of you that didn't watch the first part, this is Bruce Davies, my friend um, uh, in part one. He, he gave us a, a testimony on his life and um, how he came to know God and the, some of the things that God has done in his life. Um, and, you know, pretty powerful story without really even touching even touching the surface, actually. So I'm just so amazed at, 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 at your story. Um, but we, because it went for a while, we sort of decided to come back and do part two because this came about, our conversation came about that, you know, in church um, last weekend, I was having... I was having my own moment. You were having a moment. I was having a moment. No kick but a moment. I was just feeling a little bit disheartened, you know, with the suffering in the world. Um, uh, a friend, a friend of mine in my prayer group, she's had some a long-term illness, and you know, and then you know, I was just seeing some stuff in South Africa, so you know, the famine in um, South Africa. Um, children that are, are suffering. I decided when I went to church on Sunday morning, um, I just sat somewhere completely different. For And, and mm. you know, for that reason, that I think God orchestrated for me to sit next to Bruce, or Bruce come sit next to me, mm. um, because it opened up a conversation where um, I just said, you know, how are you going? And I, and I think even in that moment where I said, oh, just dealing with a bit of unbelief right now. And I knew by even saying that, I, it was almost like I, I knew in my spirit, <laughs> it was about to unleash something on me mm. and I needed to ask the question so he could minister to me And um, in that moment. So I um, I just said, oh, how are you? And, and, and your words were, do you know me or have you spoken to me lately? And lifted up his, you know, his, you know, his, his arm, which, yeah. you know, has a disability. And I just sort of went, oh, speak to me, you know. And, 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 and the funny thing <laughs> is that um, that morning, about four o'clock in the morning, I was woken up and um, I like, I felt it in my spirit. I says, oh, you've got to go to church. And I said, yep, we're going to church, mate. It's okay. And he <laughs> says, I want you to go to church. He says, walk in there by yourself. He says, stand at the back. This is, there's going to be somebody what needs encouragement. And I said, <laughs> okay, God, that's good. Yeah, I'm going to do that. He says, but, oh, my God, please don't make it a woman. And I said, I really don't need that. I really don't need that, you know. And I said, oh, I'll do it, but I'm no woman. You know? I'm not going to do it to a woman. I said, no, I'm not going to do that. And, um, and, and like, I go in there and I put my hands on the, uh, the back pew area of the seats. And I'm looking around and like, I felt like I was back in security because I'm going, who is it? Who is it? Who, who needs to be expelled from this church? And who needs some encouragement? And, and uh, Kirsty was just sitting there and I said, g'day, how you going? And I was still looking out. I thought, oh, please don't make it a woman. And, <laughs> and completely ignoring me. <laughs> and, no, I just didn't think it, you know, it wasn't me. Yeah, I just didn't want it to be a woman and like, she said, oh, hello. So I sat down and I said, oh, here you go. <laughs> and uh, I thought, oh, yeah, I'll just say it to her and then I'll be gone and go and sit next to some blokes all by myself, you know. And uh, she said, oh, you know, like, um, you know, I've had a bit of a rough time and all that sort of stuff. And um, <clears throat> and I said, oh, well, experiencing yeah, yeah. Some I, I kind of anger. know a little bit about pain. And I told her about the fishing trip. Um, and so he launched, at that moment, he decided to launch into the fishing trip. It was the day before, wasn't it? No, no, it was um, it was a week before. I think it was a week before, yeah. A week before. Um, so, um, yeah, I, um, we, I go fishing quite a bit out in the boat. And um, I, I'd gone out previously in this area and we'd done well, you know, and like, God was saying to me, he says, talk to me when you're out there. So it was the night before. So you prayed, yeah, I'm going I, fishing, Lord. I, I, I said, I'm going fishing on the boat. I says, I pray that the guys will catch something, you know. And 
I um, he says he says talk to talk me to as me. you get onto the boat. So like this bloke who owned the boat, he, he's not a Christian, and I said, Oh Lord, this is <laughs> so everybody would hear it. A nice balmy four thirty in the morning, very brisk very oh, breeze Lord. coming on. And I I, I said, God I says, you're awesome, mate. He says, you really are. He says, I don't care if I don't catch a fish. He says, I want it to be a day that's blessed by you. So, and I, I get in the boat and I says, Lord, I want a snapper. I says, I want a nice pinky, you know. So um, we, we get out there and I drop the line, caught a snapper. And my mate Mitchell, who's a Christian, I says, see, mate, he says, this is Jesus, mate. <laughs> and he goes, yeah, mate, yeah. yeah and, mate, I, yeah. And, and like the guy who owned the boat's going, oh, what, you know, what's going on here? And I, I, I says, Lord, I want another snapper, a little bit bigger. So I put my hand on the rod. And, and like before it hit the bottom, the jig hit the bottom, straight on. And like I got a, an electric reel. So it, it, it brings the fish up and I'm going, oh. And I had this realization, and it happens to anybody who like prays for a, you know something for a long extended period of time. When it happens, it's like a bit of a shock, and I go, "Oh, I did this, but should this be happening, God?" And I was actually saying that to him. I said, "This is full on, mate. This is really full on." So five more times, I dropped that line, and I catch. And he catch a fish. Catch big fish. And nobody else, no on the, else, no one else on the boat even got a bite. And I was like catching them, you know, the fish. And the owner of the boat said, jokingly, he says, I'm going to cut your line. He says, you can't catch any more because they'll be. And, um, and I says, oh, um, you know, I said to the other guys, what do you want? He says, Jesus is here. He says, he'll get you what you want. <laughs> and, they, and they went, yeah, right, yo. Yeah. And I said, Mitch, you believe? He says, what do you want? And uh, he says, oh, I wouldn't mind, you know, a graper or something like that. I says, Lord, I says, graper. I says, bring it up, please. And it wasn't like I was being arrogant or self-centered or anything like that. I had a strength in me yeah. that I could proclaim it. And I knew, not hope, you, you I knew it was going to happen. In the anointing that was, you know, the Holy Spirit was there and I knew, yeah. And, and like Mitchell drops his line down, boo, he's on. And he catches a grape. Grape. And I said, I said to Terry, um, he's a, a beautiful bloke. And he was a bit frustrated because he hadn't caught anything. And he says, oh, I want a squid. So. Doesn't the other guy say, we're not going to get a squid here. It's 40 yeah. meters of water. There's yeah. no, ain't no squid. He says, uh, Bruce is using uh, like a, a, a jig to catch tuna. He says, uh, like, squid don't usually get onto that. And I put it down and I thought, oh, yeah, I'll catch a, you know, a mulloway or something like that, another snapper. And I could feel this, like, soft tugging on the So I pulled it up and it was like a, a kilo and a half of squid what <laughs> came from a place that shouldn't have got it and there were sharks around there was all other fish and it should have been eaten so um, <laughs> Terry scooped it up and he's looking at me and says oh I believe I believe now and I said you know to the other guy he says what do you want and he says I said all you have to do is, is talk is this the atheist yeah he's, he's manifesting at this point isn't he he's oh, like no nah, this is bullshit no well, he, he was he was saying oh they're like he was like hedging his bets, you know, like you could see the body leg was like, oh. He wants to believe, but at the same time he's like, no. Nah. This is can't be true, you know, like, and um, I said, what do you want, mate? What do you want? He says, I want a do fish. And I said, talk to Jesus, he will give it to you. And he <laughs> says, you do it. I said, Rob doesn't want to talk to you, but I'm going to talk to you. And he wants a do fish. Before it hit the, the, the bottom of the sea, the G, he was onto a massive do, uh, like do fish. <laughs> And he's got, I can't, I just, no. I just can't do this. I just can't deal. But yeah. the, it wasn't just the fishing. There was a, there was a presence there. The presence there. of God. Wow. And the, I, I have so got, cool. a, I have got a picture of like, there was a big circular uh, cloud, rain cloud. And it was about 150 meters, you know, meters off the, the sea. It was very close to the water. And it was circular and it, it looked, 
um, insane that like it looked like it was going to be very destructive and it, it was raining a little bit and we went into the this like the area of that and it reminded me of there's a I think mercy me or, or one of them they had this um, praise him in the storm and in the center of the storm like in the cyclone and, and like hurricane it's very calm but on the outside it's really rough and like god wants us to go into the center to rest in the storm so we can deal with like the stuff what's on the peripheries of our life and that's why it, it meant to me that there was peripheries you know like ourself and all this rubbish but the inner the, the inner um whole of the the storm is calm like we had like it was glassed off the water was glassed off but there was this big raging storm what was around us and we were totally protected and i i think that's that's so much like god what we 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 try to try to fight and go against the 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 tide on the peripheries of our life when we just have to fully immerse ourselves into christ and to and to drive in and do that extra um bit of hard yards that um bit of uncomfortableness to mm -hmm. break into that center of that storm and then find the peace yeah. wow so cool. It was very cool. What a cool story. Oh, it was amazing. You know what? I want to I wanna go one step further and say, um, for those of you that are following me on my Facebook page, My God Shop, um, where I have a, I sell a scripture, faith scripture based t-shirts. Um, I don't, I'm not sure that I'm doing it for the, for the money of the t-shirt. I actually, it feels like that when I'm led, <coughs> I'm led to post mm. is usually there's something going on in my life. God has done something, and I and I want to share that with the community. Mm. And then I and then I, I'll get a shirt. I'll, I'll be thinking of something, and then I, I get this. You know, there'll be a shirt that can correspond with it. So I, in my post, I I will post, uh, you know, something that God's done, and then you know this uh, the the relevant shirt. And you know, God is good came oh, yeah. to mind. All the time. And God is good came to mind and I posted about, you know, just the fact that we sat next to each other and I needed encouragement. You came out with this story and it was just, you know, God is so good. And, you know, I'm really excited to say that, you know, it's actually blessed um, over 400 people have seen that post. But, you know, people that are engaging, you know, and people don't, you know, engage with Facebook, some do, some don't. But, you know, nearly 50 people have actually liked or loved that post, which is the most popular post actually on my Facebook page today. Well, there you go. Um, and, and, you know, what? As, as I could see people, just more people liking, I said to God, I was just like, you know, that just, you know, makes my heart yeah. blessed that other people are encouraged by your story and by us it's our story because it, it you know god, god's telling you someone mm. needs a coach and i was like i'm going to sit somewhere different today and mm. and and why would i do that and and that just all came about and so as a result of that even other people have been encouraged by that um by that post that i shared and you know i'm going to post this and more people will be encouraged and it's just just the ways of God, and we just can't even get our heads around it, can we? It, it, it has taken me many years to to understand. Through our pain, we show the love of Christ to others. That it's not just that we get smashed on a you know like a brick wall every time. There's purpose to our refining, and uh, I've talked to people, and they say, "Oh well, you know." You've really gone through, you know, the rubbish. The fire. Just, what, what, why, are you, why are you still so happy? And that's the opening. And uh, like, uh, that's the thing. I eh? we, we we get too self-absorbed, and it's normal human behaviour to like get absorbed when we're um, when we're going through stress. It's like a, a military tactic. When you, when you get injured, you get circle wagons and stuff like that. But uh, God wants us not to just circle the wagons. He wants to bring people into that circle of wagons and minister to them. 
and and often it's when we're the most broken when we are mm. broken you know when we are weak he is strong yeah and i i think you know like i didn't like what i went through uh, believe me it was lonely and, and depressing and and sometimes it was very cruel and you know what the world had done but um, well, that's the, the world the, satan and and but god showed himself abundantly in so many different ways and it's not like the dramatic thing um like just going out and, and catching fish yeah joy yeah and, and like that you you know like I, I go on like hundreds of fishing trips a year but that one was special because um people really, so people really saw, saw that saw i were uh, like, witness yeah i i had like a pretty crazy week before that and i was very tormented about you know some some other, uh, some other things and god just showed through it doesn't happen all the time like that dramatic <laughs> sort of thing but there's little things like yeah, yeah. it's finding the little things that you can see is, the... is it doesn't have to be you know one thing that is just something that's learning about is that we we're expecting these massive big supernatural things you know yeah. but your relationship with with jesus and is his spirit it's your spirit and your spirit has a relationship mm. um and it does you know miracles we can see you know massive big miracles but there's also the the little things mm. that I, I think if I, you're not looking for you miss i think life is all about that you know like people talk about oh i got my new car i got my new house and all that they're big things but like when it all comes down to it it's the little things in life that keep us going you know um like um having a connection with family members have a connection with somebody that has had a rough time and, and you you connect with them not just in a human way but in a spiritual way that, that them little things um, reverberate through paternity Um, in 2006, you, you, yeah. I, um, I went fishing to Esperance, which is in the southern part of Western Australia, uh, with an old school friend. And um, uh, I, we went out through the islands and we're having a great old time, uh, reminiscing about rubbish. And um, uh, my mate, he was very keen on listening to ACDC and uh, I've, I've listened to him sort of thing and we had uh, he put on i i wasn't too fast on um he put on hell's bells and we finished up fishing and we put the boat um on the beach and i said i'm going for a walk and everybody on the, the beach could hear hell's bells coming out of his car um and i started walking and god uh, spoke to me and he said you're going to go through many trials very soon and it says it's going to refine you um, you're going to feel, feel like it's going to destroy you but it's going to it's going to improve your life uh, I drove back from Esperance to Geraldton which was uh, about 10 hours away so yeah we just we're in this walk God's telling you something's coming yeah. and you know, don't be afraid. I'm going to be with you. Yeah. I was, uh, I, uh, when I was on the beach, I said, bring it on. Eh? It says, if it's from you, eh, it's got to be good. You know, and <laughs> little did you know, you know, um, but yeah, uh, I used to, he, he, he's, he's given you the heads up. Something's yeah. coming and, I was, it, but it was you weren't afraid and he, he's, I had the then same I'm going to be with you. I had the same attitude as when I used to get on a bull or on a like a horse that I used to break. This is it. This is sure you are. know. I know the I know the business. What what's the worst it can do? Throw me off, and that's how I felt. You know, what's the worst it can do? Throw me off. You know, and um, I got back to Geraldton. Uh, I had a massive aneurysm. I had 600 ml of blood in my brain cavity. Um, they took me down to. Um, a leading hospital down in, in Perth, Western Australia, 
and um, I saw two doctors about 12 feet away from me. I was coming in and out of consciousness and they said, oh, we better get, um, better get him to talk to, you know, his kids. And, um, and don't now, think he's going to make it. They, yeah, they, 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 their prognosis wasn't good for me. Yeah, well, they, their prognosis is not good. So you, you, you kind of heard this in the distance. And yeah, and, and I went, oh, phew, come on, you know, who's running this show, me or you or Jesus, you know. And the like, I just went, oh, you know, I already know what's going to happen, you know. Uh, I've been gone through pain before, I just deal with it and then just move on. And that, so, that was the, like, that was the mentality I had because I've had, like, several major accidents over the years. God stepped in and, yeah. and intervened and... And, like, I, I got on the phone and I, I said to my uh, eldest daughter, I said, when I die, don't let the dogs be sold. <laughs> and, I, and, like, she, I just wanted to, you know, like, break the ice with her. But I was telling the truth, I didn't want the dogs to be sold. Um, but, and I said, you know something, no, God's got it all sorted. It doesn't matter. It says, it says he's got it all under control. This is why guy, it says there'll be other people that will help, you know. So, um, they were a bit shocked with that. And, um, yeah, I, I was put in a, uh, the critical care ward, uh, room 19 of, Charlie Gardner Hospital in Perth and it's pretty much a room where you go if you've got uh, brain injuries and you're about to die. So they put me in there and um, there was 19 of us in the room. 19 of you in the room yeah. and um, over the course of the next two weeks um, it's come down to two. Yeah. Um, you and I, I, I was, when they put me in there, I had uh, enough aneurysm behind my eyes and I was blind, completely blind. And um, that was a beautiful time in my life because I could hear like the rain, I could hear um, just people chatting and it, it like heightened your senses, heightened a little my bit. senses with my hearing. And I, I wasn't annoyed that I couldn't see. I was annoyed that I couldn't hear the word of God. And it just so happened, as God does, there was a retired pastor who had had a brain injury. And I said to the nurse, I can't read my Bible. I said, how the hell am I going to do this? And uh, this this guy you know, yells out, I'll read your Bible. And it, again, like the tapestry, the jigsaw puzzle that God sets before the, you know, like the formation of the earth, that he knew that I'd be in there and it was the perfect opportunity and they couldn't do a legal thing against, about it because that person was reading, the reading me the Bible and everybody, everybody else, else was listening to it. And like, they got to hear the word of yeah, God. And, and as it happens, you said that uh, within that couple of weeks, the... 17 people died. Yeah, yeah. And in about two weeks, there was about 17. 17 people who were in that place who were expected to die, did die, but they didn't die without the word of God, which yeah. was, you know, it's, it's mind, you blowing. Know, mind blowing that, that the Lord has been able to go, you know what, they got to hear my word in that time where they most needed it. So, you know, how good is God? So then we get to. Uh, I, uh, the, 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 I was the, I was exercising. You know, and and you know he's still alive. I I I. I'm, Did I, you get you got you started to get your sight back? I, you said you they, were... they said that oh, I need to have an operation, and um, there was um, there was a lot of Christians on that ward, like um, a lot of Christian nurses and all that, and there was a um, there was a nurse what had a talk to me and she said, oh, you're going to go down and get your eyeballs pulled out, you know. And she says, and they're going to spike you. Like, she was giving me the rundown on it sort of thing. And I said, oh, that's good. Yeah, that's nice. And uh, so I was all prepared, you know, like we we prepare things and then God says, whoo, no, this is, you've got to do it my way and you've got to do it in my time. 
So they prepared me, they gave me the, the medication sort of thing, so I'd be right to go down there. And, um, and they, they gave me a medication that made me talk a lot, which wasn't good. Even for my stand, I was talking a lot. <laughs> and I was well, like saying some jokes. And I Thanks was, for hanging in there. <laughs> and I was, um, I, I said, oh, this is wild, this is wild. And, and uh, one of the Christian ladies, the nurses said, oh, I'm just going to pray for you that everything runs out well. And I says, oh, it's God's time and not mine. So they took me down into the hospital. Um, and it was about 9.30 at night. And they, the surgeon came in and all his little mates ready to do the deed. And a lightning bolt hit the, the hospital. So all the power <laughs> went out till the generators kicked in. So I'm sitting in the dark and going, well, I'm not dead yet. I'm not dead yet. <laughs> and like, but it was really good because I was cracking jokes and beating me. Um, and like other nurses and doctors, and it filtered through the hospital. And when I got my sight back, um, and I was like, it was a bit of a, a rough thing, but I, they told me I had to walk around the, you know, like the, the whole way to the hospital. And uh, I walked up and there was a, a like a tea room, waiting room sort of thing. And there was some, uh, some people in there and uh, I used to go in there to steal a bitty. Um, and uh, I walked in there and like, I believe that God spoke to me and says, uh, pray for him, talk to him. And they were Middle Eastern people. And I thought, hey, income God, hey, this is And he said, talk to him. He says, don't talk to him like you, 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 you tell him a lot or, or talk, you know. Tell him like it was like for you when you were at your lowest point. And I went in there and I said, oh, uh, first they thought that I was uh, a, chaplain. a chaplain, which was kind of amusing. So I think you, you said you, you walked into them and you said, hi, you know, how are you going? You know, do you need prayer? Yeah. And um, I, I, like I, I had this conversation, I said, oh, I'm not going to go talk to them about being a Christian, you know. And uh, like, and I ended up like after, you know, connection and all that. But they, they asked, you asked them if they wanted prayer yeah. and they, they said that they were there in the hospital to say goodbye to their son who yeah. was gravely ill yeah. um, and in a coma. So, yeah, I, I um, went in there and I said, oh, I'd really like to pray for your son because they told me that your son was crook. And I said, oh, I'll pray for him. And he goes, oh, no, I don't You believe. don't believe in that? Yeah, and they, so they said, oh, we believe in the Old Testament, we don't believe in the Christian view. And um, I, I said, that's okay, mate. This is prayers like puberty, you've got to get it if you like it or not. And um, I just um, said to him, says, if you want me to pray for you, if you want to just talk to me. And he says, you don't work here, do you? And I said, no. He says, why are you doing it? Because I love to, you know. Don't tell me to. <laughs> I didn't say that. I, I just said because it's part of who I am. It's part of my culture. And they go, oh, right. And, and the, the guy just flopped his arm out on the table. And he says, pray for me then. And like he was very um, somewhat arrogant in like his body. Yeah, it was like, like, oh, like, pray for me then. Yeah, yeah. And like I said, oh, cool. He says, oh, do you mind if I hold your, your forearm? And like I started praying, and like instead of it being like all tense and all that, there was a loosening up in his, like I could feel the loosening up in his muscles. And I looked at him, and like he was emotional. And I thought that's where it's at. You know, we don't have we don't have the uh, right to demand people come to Christ. All we have to do is be obedient to Christ. Um, and um, that, like, I went and prayed for, um, they asked me to go and pray for their son, which um, was so uh, humbling. Yeah, and he passed away that night. And, uh, and like, the mother, mother of this boy, um, 
she asked me for prayer and um, she knew and I knew that there was um, a like a real uh, unburdening of like hurts yeah and like the husband he was standing right there when I was praying for it and um, yeah uh, there was a bit of dust in our eyes all of us because mm -hmm. you know it was very emotional sort of thing um, and that, uh, like when we're at our work, you know, like I was with no. <laughs> you're in and, here, you know, you're, was, you're in the head trauma wound yeah. with a prognosis of not going to make it, and there you are down the street, in the, down, the, down the alleyway, yeah. praying for this family that are about to lose their son, um, that are not of faith, yeah. and, but you gave them hope. Yeah, and that's, and that's all and, we're called to do. We're not and, called to like bully people into bond and salvation, we're there to be Christ like and to be gentle and mm. understanding and empathise with them, um, you know. Like and we can only just, you know, you know, and I think about that and I think, you know, what we're doing is bringing them hope, but what is God doing in their minds? What is God doing the in Holy their Spirit heart? Works, you know, right? the Holy Spirit is yeah. working in them. And, 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 and I think you said that you actually got to share the gospel with them yeah. Yeah. and they, they actually... I, I, I have, you know, like one of the um, real... Uh, go to scriptures, you know, your word does not come back void. Yeah. And that's inspirational to me because I, I, like, I'm pretty good at talking and I, I like to talk. And, uh, like, it doesn't matter if I'm talking to somebody what's, you know, a, a motorcycle enthusiast or, you know, like a soldier or whatever, you know, like, God gives, uh, it equips us for that moment, just mm -hmm. like Paul. Yeah. He equipped uh, for Paul to do certain things, and he In equips every one of us to be equipped for that, that um, to have that desire for that moment. And uh, I, it's so Certainly. humbling. Yeah. It is so humbling to like when you think about the the vastness of who God is, and that He created the you know the leaves and the trees and all this sort of stuff and then he, he says that man is above them and that he cares for that man so much that he died for that it it, it, it seems like uh, like a Very christmas funny. cliche you know like oh he died for us or you know he was born you know yeah but the real essence the real essence of who to he come is. from the most high that <laughs> like he didn't have to do it and he died on the cross for us Oh, truth, you know. Talk, taking all of us, and, and you know, it's amazing. When the spirit realm is real, it's a real thing out there, and there's probably people out there that you know this is really resonating with you. Um, but you were able, but God. I wasn't able. That's God, when Christ you know, took over. He, but He gave him the opportunity. He said, "God, if you are real." Yeah. then do this for me and that is that invitation that god needs it is he's a gentleman he's like you got free will you do what you like yeah. but the moment you invite him into your life is when he acts and he acts powerfully and just yeah. the, the, uh, the 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 enormity of that power is, is you know we've only really talked about a few things you've just seen it's, the, it's incredible the um one scripture that um when i was at Teen challenge and it's um, it's a great reminder of what I've become, what I've overcome, uh, and other people too. Is uh, Ezekiel 36:25, where it says, "I'll take out the heart of stone and replace it with a heart of flesh, and I'll give you the land that you've been promised by me." Amen. Um, that's that's um, that's pretty much my testimony in one one verse. <laughs> Yeah, it's uh, very cool. Because, you know, that um, we're, we're not supposed to just sit on the sidelines. We're supposed to press in. We're in a war. Um, Spiritual war, yeah. You know, like we, we have the, the armour of God on. And I remember asking, being naive and a bit silly, I said, God, you know, what's doing? And he says, you have all this armour of God. He says, but who's holding the back? It was simple. He said, I've got your back. Mm -hmm. And that's what the armour of God is. That you have to have faith that he's got your back because your back is completely there. Um, you, you can easily be killed by somebody what, you know, hurts you through your back. But he's got your back. And he'll always have your back. 
and there'll, there'll, there'll be no other way um, to protect yourself fully unless you've got the arm of God and you ask God to, to hold the mind on your back and that's um, something that's very powerful it's, it's done yeah it's made me hum humble and so respectful um, for what true men are and women of God do. Um, yeah. Wow. So. Oh, I want to thank Bruce for uh, coming and chatting to us today. Um, and feel free for anyone that wants to perhaps reach out to yeah. Bruce. Um, he's more than willing. I should there be some people that would perhaps like to ask questions or that would resonate with him and you know so get in touch make some comments and uh yeah definitely so thank you father thank you bruce and thank you um To, to answer questions and answer any prayers. Uh, I'll just take the opportunity to say thank you to, to God today who's yes. blessed us with this great time of fellowship and um, an encouragement that's going to come out there to other people. 
Uh, thank you, Lord. And thank you. Thank you, thank you Bruce. Well, thank you, ma'am. <laughs> Is there you want any parting words? No, there's lots. <laughs> yeah. uh, I, I, you know, like, um, hold on to your first love, but let it grow. We're, 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 we're not supposed to be seeds all the time. We're supposed to be mustard trees. And, and just hold on to your first love as your anchor, but drive on to Christ no matter what. Because it is worth it. It doesn't feel like it's worth it a lot of time, but it is worth it because there's that that glorious knowing that you're you're all right in, in God's hands. Amen to that. Praise God. Amen. Thanks, guys. See you soon.